go. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, A to Z haircut, and today we're going to be doing the B haircut. We're going to have two ways that I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it one way on one side, one way on the other. This is not the mannequin we're going to use, but I wanted to show you. I wanted to review a little bit with you. Uh, my last video was on uh, the slicing or just paneling type of weave and this one was already done I showed it to you and then I demoed to you how to do it now different mannequins are going to create just a little bit of a different result and you can see that it looks like she was just foil weave instead of paneled this was only with 20 foils but I want to show you the one that I demoed with and this just definitely looks like she was foiled weave without paneling but we know she was paneled because we have our panel line right here. You can see it. That thick line right there up, up above, up in the upper ridge. Now you can see that it was paneled. But once you bring the hair down, it looks like she was just, did a regular foil weave, you know, picking it out a little bit. So I'm gonna turn this real slow for you to see. And, um, and in this area here, remember, we just paneled it straight across. But still, because of the way the hair falls and so on, I'm going to change this part just a bit, take it more to the center, and now you see more little highlights popping out there. Again, that was just paneled. This hair is a little bit straighter, uh, not so fluffy, and of course it's a different mannequin. But yeah, you can see how with 20 foils, you can just put it in there and however they wear the hair it's just the variables are there the good part is again you stay away from the perimeter line because you see she can pull it back and it's not going to show how it's growing out what we're going to do today is the V haircut and oh by the way uh, if you're interested in my book sorry if you're interested in my book you can go through West Bow Press the name of the book is Trust your PhD hairstylist. Raise the mannequin a little. Raise the mannequin a bit. Okay. Good. Okay. So, anyways, the name of the book is Trust Your PhD Hairstylist. Uh, you can go through Westbow Press. It goes as deep as I go into hair cutting on the whys. This is why. This is why. This is why. The stories go deep into that, but it's stylist talking, stylist experiences, stylist thoughts, and many times we don't realize that stylists do think, uh, but it's just, you know, so much of it is it, it, having done this for so many years, and then now being able to speak about every possible experience, either that I saw, or I experienced, or I heard about, all of it. So, and then the last chapter is yours. It goes deep into hair color. It, it actually shows you that color's not difficult, but you've got to know how it's made. And, and it goes deep into that. So anyways, Westbow Press, if you're interested, it's uh, ready now. You may order it if you want. I have no idea. Uh, there, but I might add to you that uh, there are just a couple of spelling errors that I thought uh, after you read it so many times, and I've read it a million times, the couple of them were like crazy errors that I made on the third chapter, and the girl is cleaning the window to the salon before the incident happens and stuff, and uh, it says widow, and it says it twice instead of window. But that's the only one that kind of bothered me. As you get further on, uh, not much. So, I don't know, it's my first book. Okay, so anyways, uh, if you're interested, West Bow Press. So what I'm going to do, this is synthetic hair. I hate synthetic hair, but it's my only really long mannequin. I mean, this mannequin, if I, I'm going to stand next to it, and if it was me wearing it, my hair would be almost down to my navel. All right, so this is a really long mannequin. It is synthetic hair. It's a little harder to cut, but um, I want to show you two ways. The first one, I'm going to subsection diagonal parts. Just just pretend that you have a center part right here. That 
you know, from center frontal to center nape. Now that's, go back and review the parts of the head. This is how I speak in my classes. I'm not here to impress you. I'm here to teach you, but I would like you to be professional. Be professional. You know, like I said, doctors, when they give you, when they do surgery, they, they're going to say, we're going to make a small incision. Uh, we're going to make a, you know, it's going to be a decent sized incision. They use the word incision. They don't say, well, we're going to cut you here and we're, then we're going to cut you there. All right, which sounds better. It sounds better when you speak to your clients professionally, when you speak professionally to each other, just as when you're in the doctor's office and he's talking to someone, your dental office, he's talking to the dental assistants. They use their professional terms. We have professional terms. So, you know, utilize and look into it. So anyway, here we go. I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut it. It is synthetic hair. I hate synthetic hair. But the thing about this hair is it's long enough to really do what I want it to do. I'm holding it in this form because I'm gonna be holding it, I'm gonna be bringing it forward. I am parting it off at the center nape. The one, one thing that I want you to take note of, whenever you're parting, if your comb needs to be horizontal, if your comb is at an angle, you're not gonna get a straight part. Doesn't matter what angle it is. Look at your comb. Look at your comb when you part the hair. So what I'm doing right now, my comb is coming out vertically, but it's gonna be perfect right onto that center nape. And I'm not gonna worry about separating it with a clip or anything, because everything is gonna come up. The first cut is gonna be done up at the frontal fringe. Everything is going to be drawn up to the frontal fringe and cut at about a 45 degree angle. The next one, everything is going to be cut to the front of the face, in other words, the forehead. And I need to determine, you know, how long do I want it to be? How long before it starts the V? The variables here are going to be, when the hair comes down, you're going to notice a corner at the back. That is from the nape line. I've explained this in other haircuts, but whenever you bring it and you take it to a stationary guide, in other words, one place, and direct all the hair to it, it gathers that perimeter line still yet. So it's not crooked. You don't end up with those little uh, corners or those little peaks for nothing. That is the shape of the head. So, you know, it still makes it correct and you still have to go and clean it up. So let me make an effort here. Get my shear real quick. I'm gonna wet her down again. And like I said, I'm holding her up at the frontal fringe at a 45 degree angle. Where's the frontal fringe? Right here, okay? Frontal fringe is this area right here. Right off the center apex, down into the parietal line. So my guides are gonna be in those areas. I want to see, I want to keep my length. So how much do I wanna take off? Well, this is the center back from the nape. And I want that because the nape is gonna be the longest point in the back. So I can still take off a decent amount. Well, look at this. I'm gonna take it, bring it to the center. Frontal, so that's about how much I'm gonna take off. This is all gonna come off, off the front. Does it look like a lot? Yes. Do I want it a little bit longer? Okay. So there's my guide off that center back and I'm bringing it to the center front. And I'm holding it. I'm gonna. I'm holding it up at the apex or the frontal fringe, straight out. All right. So I'm gonna bring this back down. I've got a range as far as how I'm gonna cut this, and I'm gonna cut it what at an angle. So I'm gonna take a diagonal part. Again, you see that being shaped out. It's a triangle right there. I'm gonna bring it straight out, and I'm gonna cut it at an angle, 45 degree angle. You're gonna see the shear go down. So I'm gonna take that, take it off, keep coming, and you'll see that angle, it's right there. That's gonna drop. I'm gonna take another diagonal part. Now I'm gonna turn the mannequin around for you to see this diagonal part. Do you see that? Now it's at the apex, down to that flat part of the head, right at the tem temporal area. Do you see the angle of the comb? It's at a diagonal that is being cut. Okay, what I want you to see is the two variables. 
as far as far as how this cut comes out. Make sure that when you do this, that this hair and this hair is straight out. The hair at the center apex is straight out, and again, it looks almost like I'm cutting it straight across. I'm not. I'm cutting it at a 45 degree angle. Yeah, these mannequins are a little bit harder to cut. Oh, and I'm moving it over. I don't want to move it over. I want to move it to that center frontal area. And see, you saw me start making a mistake there, didn't you? Okay, so this is what I want you to see. Look at this, how it's starting to come out now. You see that this is the front, okay? That's because of this line right here at the frontal area. As we move away from the frontal area, you see it becoming more at an angle. So I'm gonna come back to the, right at the crown, into the area almost behind the ear, bring all of that forward, same spot, same spot, same angle, and you notice how I'm taking off less hair now. 45 degree angle cut. And you'll start seeing that V. Now, once I get back to the crown, once I get back to the center occipital crown area right here by the vertex, my partings are going to be slightly vertical. Just ever so slightly vertical. So I'm going to comb this out, but I'm going to show the back to you in just a minute to show you how it goes into that V. Let me put my foot on this so it holds it. And as I've said before, I hate these. And I have a tangle there that's going to drive me nuts. I'm going to bypass it. I'm going to get in front of it. I hate these mannequins. Now see, I'm right here at the center front, bringing it out to my guide, still cutting it. And you'll start seeing, I'm going to go right straight up and down on the center back. That's the only area that you're going to create that straight line down. If you want to separate it before you do it, that's perfectly fine. Now let me find that tangle again. And I'll get rid of it so it doesn't drive us crazy. But you're beginning to see it start coming down. Straight line back now. That's the only time that you're going to create that straight line back. I hope you can see this cameraman. So this one. Let me get rid of that tangle. There you go. All right, so now I'm bringing all the hair up. Every bit of it. Everything is coming up to its original place. Hold that. And now, look at how much less hair is coming off, still at that angle. All right. Now I'm going to turn her around, or to the side, for you to see this V haircut coming in. See that? See that line? Now what's this here? That is our nape, that corner. You're going to get that corner. So I'm going to slightly stand in front of it. Cameraman, I want you to catch this. And this is called slide cutting. And all I'm going to do is take it from the last haircut right there. And I'm going to slide cut it just a little bit at a time because that is that corner. So do you see that V coming in? That's off the very center of the back. I'm going to move that over. And see it? She's kept her length, but she's got... Let me move this over real good for you to see it better. Because the other side, I'm going to hold it a little different. I prefer this, this angle to create this cut. Now, what I want you to get, see that little corner right there? That is this. So you, we want that perfect V coming in off the front. And then we look at all these little things that are happening. We took it to a stationary guide, but then it developed all of these lines. So everything is cut at a diagonal. 
till you get right here at the nape line and then you start bringing it at a slight diagonal and then at the center occipital back it's straight up and down so these are your angles for the cut do you see the comb finally straight up and down but remember we're going to get those lines so we clean this one up and you see that it's gone straight down I'm going to do my best to show it to you without getting in front of it there you go straight down what do we have here that area just above the ear again slide cut it to blend this yes, goes right there but that's it so now we have that V cut coming down and is it going to be slightly layered up front yes that's almost like face framing there's another term for this if we only went right at right at the area at the flat part of the head up to the center apex and held it straight out that's going to create layering and the rest would just do its own thing but you can see that V coming in and then again nope we're good there get rid of that right there but we're good as far as that coming into that V cut now the next one I want to show you I'm going to get on the other side of it because this one is going to come straight out now I've also seen I'm sure you've seen videos on this cut where they have taken it, somebody took this cut and they um, held it at the shoulder and then cut it horizontally. It came out a little bit rounded. Now I can tell you the why on that because she brought it again to a stationary guide, held it straight out, cut it horizontally. That's because it followed the pattern of the nape. When you bring it out in this form, straight into the face or in front of the face, you're going to still have that, but all you're going to get is the corner. But if you bring it straight down, that corner becomes even more excessive. So know that you know it's going to pick up these lines. What happened here when she brought it to the corner? Well, not much. You see, so she brought it to the corner and cut it there. And then what happens is it falls down and doesn't really V out. We want it to V all the way from the front to the back. The front is going to look like a lot more layers. But this time you'll see the difference. This is a little bit choppier. You see that real choppy look. This side, when we bring it just straight forward, is not going to be as choppy. I will use the other side as my guide as well. So the first one was brought to the frontal fringe. Everything was brought up. All right. The sections, first it was in this form, this form, you see where it straightens out a bit and then finally straight to pull it straight out to cut it at an angle. This one on this side, everything is going to be held in this form. However, cut straight. So I'm going to section it out diagonally but cut it straight up and down. Section it out diagonally, cut it straight. Section it out diagonally to the nape. Cut it straight and then bring this at the center part it's the only time I'm going to bring it straight up and down. Normally it's going to be diagonal parts. So let me move my mannequin again. And uh, I just did a clipper cut on this thing and that was a trip. That was just, I just do not, I, I see no purpose in um, synthetic hair mannequins. Myself, I don't know, maybe you do, but. Um, so let me bring this around, cameraman, you got that all right? Yep. All right, so I'm going to, like I said, diagonal part, but this time, and I am going to take a guide from the other side, so they'll be even, but it's just going to be a slightly different cut. All right, so this time, it's, where is it? There it is, I just dropped it and you didn't see it. So this time it's straight up and, straight up and down. Okay, come on, show me where you're at. There it is. All right, I've got it. All right, so it's straight up and down. The hair is held straight up and down. And then I'm going to take it off straight up. And you're going to see a little bit heavier cut. Do you see that? It's already heavy because I held it straight. So it's heavy. If you don't want it to be heavy, if you want it to be light and choppy, you have to hold it at an angle. In order to make a circle, it's a bunch of different angles. We want this circle to be complete. Now what we've done here is we've created a bit of a heavy line. So again, I'm going to take it at an angle, but I'm holding it again 
straight out to the face. See that? Straight out to the center of the face. Let the nose be your guide. All right, there it is. The nose is my guide. Up and down. Straight forward. And you're seeing that, that it's not as choppy as the other one. Depends on what she wants. You notice it's going under. They may want it to go under. It's not as light and airy as taking it at an angle and taking it higher. And I could have, you know, if I'd have taken it at an angle and cut it straight up and down, could have done the same thing. Okay, now at a slight angle, bring it over. And I'm bringing it forward. And with really long hair, it makes a difference. Now you see how we don't have as much to cut now. And yet, it's coming down and you can see that V. Okay, still take it at an angle up to the corner of that nape and then I'm gonna take it straight up and down. And it's harder with the longer hair. But when they want that V cut, and you want it to look like a V, you need to bring it all over, all to the front. You can see my guide right there. All right, straight up and down. Much different, isn't it? Much different, much lighter, automatically goes down. Again, what happens? Shorter moves longer. When we're holding it up, we're cutting it at that angle. So what happens when the hair comes down, this shorter hair is just flying all over the place. This one is more like into the blunt cut because it's definitely a straight line up and down. So I'm gonna bring this over. I'm actually bringing a little bit of hair over as well from the other side. It makes it hard for me to show you every angle when we're doing videos. But just remember we went from the center, occipital, straight up and down. Let me hold this thing so it stops moving. Bring everything forward. And we're bringing it all towards the face. And you see there's, you can see my guide, there's very, almost nothing to be cut. Now I'll just go ahead and clean up those ends and you'll see that it makes no difference. So now I'm gonna turn her around. That's the only variable right here, but can you see that V cut? Nice blunt V cut. All right, this is coming off again, That this area, still at the nape line. And what is this corner that we see? That corner is still this corner. So I'm going to clean that up. You have to stand in front of what you're cutting to do that. And again, I'm right here, let me pull it up. There's the corner. That's what I'm taking care of. And what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to bring it forward a bit instead of instead of slide cutting it down like I did. I, you know these mannequins do tangle too, don't they? Okay, there's the corner. Take it, slide cut it. There you go. And still got the little bit, just a scotch of a corner that you can see right there. Because what do we want? We want it to be, and this, doing it in this form, you can definitely see the V coming down a lot more. It's not as, it's not as airy, and you can see both sides. This side is gonna have a little bit more movement. This side is not. And that comes down to the decision that we made as far as how we're gonna cut it. We're gonna bring it down. Clean this up again. That's the nape. And you want it to look just like the V. So you bring it down. Do not cut it across. Be aware of that. It's just those ends that we're getting rid of. Nope. See, it's just pretty balanced now. And just a little bit of point cutting there. But you see that it's definitely a V. Now I'm going to come over to the other side because I want to make sure. See, that works out better. There are no, there's just a tiny little corner down there, but that's it. So bringing it straight out definitely creates that more solid line V cut that you're seeing. Whereas if you bring it up, you're gonna have a lot more movement. And of course, where's the longest point? Right here. And you want that 
to again come into a V. We don't necessarily want it real airy, but uh, depends again on preference. You see it, it just comes right into that V. We definitely can see that that's longer. I'm gonna turn it over to the other side. If you want more movement, more choppiness, there you go. You have the option of both. You can do either one. Now again, this is a lot like the face framing, but I did want to show you the V-cut. This is the perfect mannequin for it, and it's definitely a V. You can see it, okay? And see, and we're even on both sides, no matter how we did it. We're still even on both sides with those little hairs coming out, but it goes up shorter, goes up shorter. Longest point is at the very center back. Um, this one has a little bit of a wave to it, but if you've got perfectly straight hair, You'll be able to see it even better. You can see that V line in the, in the bottom there. This is kind of popping out just a little bit. Let's see, where is that at? Oh my goodness. Nope, oh, that's actually at the center back. So this hair is just deciding to dance a little bit. So it's not difficult to cut a V cut. The best way to do it though is on one length hair. If it's layered hair, you're gonna have a lot more movement right here. So we don't want all that movement, we just want to have that, um, that nice V going in the back. Uh, maybe a little bit of choppiness, is it gonna create layers? Yes, because all of this hair traveled to one spot and what? Got cut different lengths. So you're gonna have a slight layering. Where it's the longest is of course the center back that comes over to be cut and there's, you see, you know, no layering, but however, as you go back, you can see that there's a slight layering. So ever so slight. And the same thing on the other side. If we um, pull it out, you see that layer right there? There you go. That's because we took it up. Which hair traveled farthest? This one. See, this was there. The other one's right over there. It's reaching, but you know, you guys, you can check it on your own. But you can see that if you take it up to the frontal fringe, cut it at a 45 degree angle, everything goes up. Mind your sectioning, you're in a round head, you want to do it uh, diagonally. And then not until you get to the center back on both cuts do you cut it, do you come back uh, in a straight line center to the center back, past the center occipital down into that center nape, and then direct it forward to the frontal fringe area. Variables again, let's say you direct it to the side. Okay, what's going to happen if we do that? This is going to be slightly shorter than what this is right now. This is still going to be shorter than the rest of it because it's all being directed to be cut in that form. This will be, okay, let's say that's the cut. That's going to match in that point. That's going to match at that point. That's going to be further. You see what I'm saying? I'm bringing this to the guide. All right, you see it? That's gonna grow. It's going to get longer in the back. So a V cut is not that hard to do. It's a quick cut. It's a nice cut. You can see that it's definitely V'd out right there. Uh, and what's good about it too, is many times when girls that have had all this long hair, they kind of like the slight layering effect. One minute. What I want you to notice is, notice how this curves under and this curves out. That has to do with elevating it out. This has to do with elevating it towards the front. All right, take care guys, God bless. I hope you got something out of this cut. Don't forget, West Bow Press, trust your PhD stylist. That's me, God bless, bye.